Okay, cool. So I hope the uh, the pain uh, module wasn't too confronting for you. But like I said, you know, it is important to get back into the body, you know, start to reintegrate what those feelings are telling us. And, you know, the first couple of modules here are, uh, I suppose they can be confronting, but we're also doing it for a reason. You know, there is a profound why here. We're trying to unpack very deep layers of awareness that perhaps have been you know, filled in with dirt and rubble and distraction and external validation and influence for, for years for some people, you know, taking all that away and starting to get down to the truth of our own experience. Um, it's very, very insightful. And, uh, you know, it is my wish that, uh, especially with modern technology, that everyone, you know, gives themselves time to, to do this kind of work because, you know, we often think that our lives are rich and that our lives have meaning, you know, but if we reflect, we'll start to re-navigate and think, oh, this is actually kind of what I want to do here, you know, and um, especially with one of the modules that we'll be discussing here with Dharma, I think the idea that meaningful work can be found within the work itself, as opposed to trying to always attain the fruits of the labor, you know, that external, that, that means and ends type idea. If we can move away from that through a process of reflection and re-navigation, our lives will be, um, deeply fulfilling. So I think that's a really important consideration. But let's have a have a discussion about myth here, guys. So what is a myth? Uh, Joseph Campbell in Hero with a Thousand Faces talks about how a myth is the narrative of a society and we each possess our own myths. So these are the stories that we tell ourselves that we believe to be true. And we believe them to be true so much that they become second nature and unconscious. And we just live with these kind of restrictions of belief systems. It's very important that we objectively audit our belief systems because they could be holding us back from a, uh, a much more meaningful life. And, you know, this module is all about unpacking those belief systems. I have found that the best way to do that is to write out a very honest, real, normal day in your life and to look back on that day after you've written the journal and tell yourself whether you want to kind of live under that myth for the rest of your life. So it's another confronting journal, but it will give you enough motivation to move on to the degree that you're honest. That's really important. I want to talk about some neuroscience behind this, as well as kind of how we develop as human, as human beings. So when we're young, the world is just incredible. It's awe-inspiring, everything is novel, everything is new, and it's wonderful. So we live in this state of blissful unconsciousness, okay? But it's also very uh, intimidating and very scary. And that's why we're so dependent upon our mothers specifically, but our parents as well. And, you know, in ancestral times, the whole tribe, because we are very, very ignorant of the dangers that truly exist. As we go out there and we explore more of the world, you know, when we're young, we put things into our mouths and, you know, we laugh and we cry and we smell things, all that sort of stuff. We render the world unconscious by a process of exploration. So there's a very uh, simple analogy that I want to give you here. So if I've never seen a tree before and I go up to this tree and it's very exciting, but I'm also very curious and kind of not sure what it's going to do to me. And I slowly touch it, put the bark in my mouth and I you know, play around with it. And I find out that it's actually quite safe. I've rendered either safe or irrelevant. And that's the thing. When we make the world irrelevant, we habitualize ourselves to it, which is really good because we don't want to keep processing all this stimuli all the time. We'll just blow up. And the brain is very good at reserving energy. And it does that through a process of habitualization. Because that is the case, we might have had something very scary happen to us and believe that that's how the world is. And that specifically happens to us, you know, in between the ages of zero to seven, when the brain is very malleable, you know, it's very, very neuroplastic to use that word. And, uh, you know, we, we tend to take on these belief systems and we still can, you know, after the age of seven, as the, the front part of the brain is, is really growing and developing. But it is within that time frame that these very strong, you know, implicit belief systems are, uh, uh, you know, they dig themselves into the brain and that's what we believe to be true. So for example, you know, if you're told that, uh, you know, you're ugly, for an example, very subjective, you know, it's not going to war, it's not sexual abuse, for an example, but it is some kind of painful truth. 
at that age, if you can't rationalize and analyze, you know, and, and, and think about someone else's perspective, you will just take that as a belief and that will lead to this kind of lack of self-worth. Oh, of course, I'm ugly. That is so unconscious as well that it's so important to, you know, look at this kind of stuff through an objective lens. Is that actually true? The best way you can do this, apart from doing what we're about to do, is have a think about some of the more negative or painful memories in your life. And if these go back more than two years, three years, for example, there's still probably a lot of emotional weight around those. So beyond this course, you know, you might like to write a myth journal around those experiences as well, because moving beyond those, you know, recognizing that these actually aren't truths, they are just, um, you know, examples of uh, dormant belief systems that don't need to be there anymore. It really will help you progress in life.